Imagine this. A young entrepreneur named Jonathan, caught in the whirlwind of decision making and feeling utterly overwhelmed. In the bustling city that never sleeps, Jonathan finds himself at a crossroads, his mind a battlefield of tough choices, both personal and professional. Every decision feels like a high stakes gamble and the pressure is mounting. But little does he know, a turning point is just around the corner. One day, amidst the chaos, he stumbles upon an ancient book in the Bible, weathered with age, yet glowing with promise. The title, it reads Proverbs. Intrigued, he flips open the cover, revealing a treasure trove of wisdom drawn from the deep wells of ancient Hebrew teachings. As he dives into the pages, the words of King Solomon begin to resonate, echoing in the chambers of his heart. A new journey begins for Jonathan, a journey towards wisdom, understanding, and peace. The path of wisdom was about to unfold for Jonathan. Jonathan opens the Bible. He see, and a verse from Proverbs catches his eye, for the Lord giveth wisdom. As Jonathan delved deeper into this ancient wisdom, he began to unlock the secrets hidden in Solomon's teachings. The Hebrew word for wisdom, hachma, or shachma, leapt from the page. But chokma means more than just wisdom in the way we typically understand it. It's not simply about knowing facts or having information. Instead, it suggests a deep understanding that comes from experience. Euphoria's it's about making connections, seeing patterns, and understanding the world in a profound, holistic way. Imagine wisdom as a wellspring. It's not stagnant. It's dynamic, constantly flowing. It's not a commodity you can own, but rather a resource you can tap into. This is the kind of wisdom that Chokma refers to. It's wisdom that originates from a divine source that flows like a river, nourishing everything it touches, and this wisdom is not just about the intellect. It's about the heart, the soul, and the spirit. It's about having the courage to ask the tough questions, the humility to admit when you don't know the answers, and the perseverance to keep seeking the truth. It's about using your knowledge and understanding to make the world a better place. Jonathan realized that wisdom is not something you gain overnight. It's a journey. It's about learning from your experiences, growing from your mistakes, and constantly striving to understand more deeply. It's about being open to new ideas, questioning your assumptions, and never being satisfied with superficial answers. He saw that wisdom is not just about the destination. It's about the journey. It's about the process of seeking understanding of striving for truth and growing. It's about being fully present in each moment, appreciating the beauty and complexity of the world and recognizing the divine in everything. As Jonathan read these ancient words, he felt a spark of hope. He realized that he wasn't alone in his struggles. Thousands of years ago, King Solomon grappled with the same questions, faced the same challenges, and sought the same kind of wisdom. With this newfound understanding of wisdom, Jonathan felt a spark of hope. Faced with a critical business decision, Jonathan finds guidance in the wisdom woven into the ancient texts of Ecclesiastes. Now, as we delve deeper into this ancient wellspring of wisdom, let's examine the Hebrew word tivab, tiav. This term is often translated as better but it carries a much richer connotation. It speaks to the inherent goodness and fulfillment found in the completion of a journey, in the finality of an endeavor. This is the principle that guides Jonathan in his decision-making process. The wisdom of Ecclesiastes 7-8 echoes in his mind, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. It's a simple yet profound truth that reminds Jonathan and all of us that the value of an experience 
is often found not at the starting line, but at the finish line. This wisdom challenges the modern obsession with beginnings, with the rush of starting something new. It places value in the often overlooked beauty of endings, of completion, of seeing things through. It's about the satisfaction of finishing a race, the relief of solving a problem, the joy of achieving a goal. It's about the fulfillment that comes from closure. In the context of Jonathan's situation, this wisdom encourages him to see beyond the immediate uncertainties and fears. It urges him to look towards the potential fulfillment and growth that lies at the end of this challenging business decision. It's a shift in perspective that transforms his outlook. He sees the situation no longer as a daunting problem, but as an opportunity for growth, a step towards a more fulfilling end. This is the wisdom of Tivab Tov, the wisdom of endings and beginnings. It's a wisdom that does not shy away from completion, but embraces it, knowing that in every ending there's the promise of a new beginning. Jonathan realized that the end of a journey could be more fulfilling than its beginning. It's a realization that carries him forward, guiding his steps with newfound confidence and clarity. It's a wisdom that we all can learn from, a wisdom that echoes through time from the ancient texts of Ecclesiastes to our lives today. Our Thanes Dyson in navigating his personal relationships, Jonathan turns to Proverbs once again. This time he finds himself drawn to Proverbs 11.3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them. The Hebrew word for integrity is tamim, tamim, which carries a deeper meaning than one might initially grasp. It's not just about honesty or moral uprightness. Tamim connotes a sense of completeness and sincerity, a wholeness of character that goes beyond mere appearances. Jonathan realized that this was not just about being a good person, but about being a whole person. It was about being true to oneself and others, about being authentic and genuine in every interaction. It was about being consistent in actions and words, about keeping promises and following through on commitments. It was about living a life of sincerity and truth, where the inside matches the outside. This realization transformed Jonathan's approach to relationships. He began to value authenticity over superficiality, depth over appearance. He began to seek out relationships that were grounded in honesty and mutual respect, relationships that nurtured his growth and development. And in turn, he sought to nurture the growth and development of others. Through this journey, Jonathan learned that wisdom in relationships was not just about knowing the right things to say or do, but about being the right kind of person. It was about embodying the values of Tamim, of completeness and sincerity in every interaction. Integrity, Jonathan learned, was about completeness and sincerity. Single mom, success and failure are two sides of the same coin, and Solomon's wisdom had something to say about that too. Solomon's teachings, as seen in Ecclesiastes 9.10, invite us to give our all in every endeavor. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Here, the Hebrew word for might is koha, koach. It's not merely about physical power or brute force. It's about strength, vigor, capacity, and ability. It's about the inner resilience that allows us to keep pushing forward even in the face of adversity. Now, let's take a closer look at our friend Jonathan. He was grappling with the highs and lows of his journey, the triumphs and the trials. But as he delved into the essence of coach, he began to see success and failure through a new lens. He realized that both were equally valuable parts of his journey each with their own lessons to teach. Jonathan found that the true measure of success wasn't in the outcome, but in the effort. 
It was about pouring his heart, his soul, and yes, his coach into every task, regardless of the result. And when he stumbled, he learned that failure was not a dead end, but a stepping stone to greater wisdom. It was an opportunity to grow, to adapt, and to strengthen his resolve. So, in the dance of success and failure, Jonathan discovered the rhythm of resilience. He learned to embrace each twist and turn with the fullness of his coach, his might. Jonathan learned that strength and vigor could lead to resilience in the face of challenges. A turning point arrived when Jonathan discovered a verse in Proverbs about generosity. The verse was Proverbs 19 and 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. The Hebrew term for pity in this context is Hanan, Shanan. But what's fascinating about Shanan is that it doesn't just mean pity, it carries a much deeper, more compassionate connotation. It's about gracious, warm-hearted giving. It's about seeing someone in need and responding not out of obligation, but out of genuine kindness and empathy. Jonathan began to see generosity in a new light. It wasn't just about giving away things or money. It was about giving of oneself, one's time, one's energy, one's compassion. It was about realizing that we're all interconnected, that when one person suffers, we all suffer. Jonathan understood that gracious giving was a divine exchange. As our story comes to a close, we see a transformed Jonathan. Once overwhelmed by the pressures of decisions, he now navigates life with the wisdom of Solomon, its roots deeply entrenched in the rich soil of Hebrew etymology. The wisdom journey of Jonathan has been one of discovery and transformation. He has learned to seek hakma, chakma, wisdom from a heavenly source. He has embraced the fulfillment in completing the journey, knowing that tvab, tain tav, goodness, awaits at the end. Jonathan has upheld tamim, tamim, integrity, as a foundation in his relationships. He has put his hand to work with koha, koach, might, infusing his efforts with resilience. And he has extended hanan, shanan, gracious pity, to the poor, realizing the divine exchange in generosity. Wisdom, Jonathan discovered, was more than knowledge. It was a journey of understanding, resilience, and compassion.